My name is Dixon Depanier. I'm an emeritus professor of public health and microbiology at the School of Public Health at Columbia University in the city of New York. What is a vertical farm? So a vertical farm uh, doesn't exist yet, so I'll have to tell you about a, a high-tech single-layer farm first and then describe what that could morph into. Okay, so around the world today, you can find lots of examples of high-tech greenhouses that recycle all their nutrients, that um, grow all their food hydroponically. A, a vertical farm is an iteration of that technology simply stacked on each other and made into a tall building. So the idea really came from several aspects of public health. One is uh, the subject that I actually specialize in, it's parasit parasitology or parasitic diseases. Um, Throughout the world, most people, most when I say most, 50% of the world uses human feces as a fertilizer for their crops. This is a strategy that was engineered by the parasites, not the people. So vertical farming, or farming indoors, using um, nutrient film technology, which is another name for hydroponics, allows you to eliminate any fertilizer, basically. And all we're doing is just adding some chemicals to a solution of water and allowing the plants to take up what they need without all of the extras like heavy metals and pesticides and herbicides and the parasites. So what would a vertical farm achieve? So vertical farms, if they were the gold standard for producing food, would be advantageous for the following reasons. One is that there would be no agricultural runoff. Agricultural runoff is the world's largest source of non-point source pollution. Vertical farming doesn't produce agricultural runoff, so therefore it has a virtue of being self-contained. It's closed-loop agriculture. Two is that it saves land. We can farm in the cities, and we can let the farmland lie fallow and grow back into the forests to restore the environment, at least partially. Do we have the technology today to build a vertical farm? There are no technological reasons why we couldn't build a vertical farm tomorrow, given the right funding. Okay, so all it takes is money and desire, and all you have to do is look to these high-tech greenhouses for the examples of what to do to stack these on top of each other. The only missing element of this is the integration of those systems in a multi-story building. You don't have an integration problem in a single-story building, but you would if you stacked them on top of each other. So we have people right now working around the world on theoretical constructs of vertical farms, and how would we handle the water? How would we handle the waste? How would we handle nutrient delivery systems? How would we handle planting and harvesting? Some people say, oh, that's rocket science or it's brain surgery. Both of those things we do extremely well. I think this is a non-challenging project for humans to stack greenhouses on top of each other and get them to work. I think it's just a matter of time. Eventually there'll be this um, competition for who can do it best. And once that starts, and I believe that started now, then the ultimate uh, winner is the public. So what will the first iterations look like? Uh, I imagine it not so tall, but long. And I imagine it totally transparent. It almost like, looks like the plants are suspended and you can't see the building because the plants are there. Okay, That's how transparent it is. And it's got lots of people inside in white coats and clean technology is being exercised. It's got lots of buildings around it which takes advantage of a constant supply of, and you can say wheat, barley, corn, you can say, you can do value added industries that spring up around these farms too, as long as they're producing enough to do that. Um, I see people coming to the market every day, and instead of using refrigeration to store a week's worth of vegetables because they can't get them, you can now buy like in France, by the day. You can buy by the minute. <laughs> you can have a minute old meal what will the city of the future look like? The best example we have of a sustainable system on Earth that's large enough to compare to a city is an ecosystem. Cities right now represent parasites. All right, that's my other subject, by the way. I'm a parasitologist. So I can recognize a parasite when I see one. I can recognize a parasite when I live in one. The city is totally parasitic with regards to the environment because it doesn't manufacture anything. It simply uses up everything and then discards what it doesn't need. Ecosystems make their own food. Ecosystems process their own water. Ecosystems live within their energy means. And they live very happily. I mean, if you go down to the tropics, you'll see how robust a system, an ecosystem can be. 
A city can behave exactly the same way, but it has to start with the same premise. That is, you have to make your own food. You can't depend on the environment around you for making food. You have to make it. So my future city is based on all those ecological principles of a balanced ecosystem. Once the first vertical farms are up, you'll see the eco-city evolve from that. Well, Dr. De Pommier, on that optimistic note, thank you very much. I have to be an optimist. There's no other way. <laughs>